Dear friends of the Tom Photo channel and all new viewers, let's talk about what tripod to buy. I was searching for a new tripod that would double for photo and video, would be durable and affordable. I decided to go with something better than the cheapest option. After doing some research, it boiled down to Velbon and Manfrotto. Manfrotto was more expensive than I saw myself pay for a tripod. So it started to look more like Velbon. I definitely wanted a special smooth video head for seamless video transitions. So now I had narrowed it down to two models, Velbon VideoMate 438 and Velbon VideoMate 638. The first one seemed adequate, but I eventually went with the other because the bigger brother extended higher and was a bit heavier and bulkier, which is better for stable video. I want greater maximal height because then I can work mostly with the center column down. The center column is more wobbly by definition than the intersection of legs is. The 638 that I got extends to 171 centimeters as opposed to 153.5 centimeters for the 438 model. It can carry 4 kilograms as opposed to 2. The weight difference is about 2 kilograms versus 1.2 kilograms. They pack to a closed length of 67 centimeters and 59 centimeters respectively. You want the closed length to be minimal for ease of carrying, but also because then you can go lower with your camera. However, you cannot get the best of both worlds and have the largest tripod that packs down to minimal size. The VideoMate 638 came in a nice carrying bag, which I like a lot. The first impressions were very positive. It feels like a real thing it is. I immediately thought that this wonderful frame doesn't feel like aluminum. It feels better actually. It feels like it's going to last a long, long time. This tripod really is stable like a rock, no vibrations at all. I'm super happy with the stability and this alone makes me recommend this tripod to you. The video head is even better than I thought. We still have a budget tripod here and I was worried that uh, I'd get jumps in my video when I pan the camera. Uh, nothing like this in reality. The transitions are very smooth and I've tested it uh, at room temperature and also at minus eight degrees. The video head's arm is long enough to allow really precise movements. What's really nice is that you have two knobs that you can turn to change the head's resistance or friction, I guess you could call it. So it's really easy to choose the settings you want. If you want to use this tripod for photography, you can lock the head by fastening the side screws. So this is also a good photo tripod. But I must say that for photo I personally prefer lighter tripods. Unless you do a very long shutter speed photography or work in windy conditions of course. The rubber pads are durable and ensure a good grip. The central column extends by turning the handle clockwise and pulls in when you turn it in the other direction. The camera plate has a quick release, just push it and it locks to place. The plate is covered with cork to ensure that it won't scratch your camera. So overall, a wonderful buy and a great deal at the discount price of 85 euro that I paid. I made a good decision indeed and I'm happy. But are there any flaws? Anything I'm not entirely happy about? This is almost always true and this item is no exception. First, the quick release plate is attached to camera by turning a knob underneath. If you want to make it tight, you have to have a coin or a screwdriver. At location, I usually find that I don't have either. And then the camera comes loose every once in a while. My other tripod has a small handle for tightening up. The plate is a quick lock type and should immediately lock the camera in place. I don't know if it's just me, but I struggle to find the right way of attaching the plate to the tripod when the camera is attached to the plate. I really wanted this to be simple. Apparently it takes more advanced tripod to nail this function. Or perhaps it just takes a more apt operator, which is very likely. The handle to turn the central column up and down operates plastic against plastic. 
I don't think it's going to last much longer than a similar design on much cheaper tripods. If it breaks, it can hopefully still be operated by pulling and pushing it by hand. This is what I do with my other tripod where the handle already came off. I wish this semi-sophisticated solution wasn't there at all. I wish it would be simpler, the push and pull type. The legs are extended by lowering the central ring around the central pole. You can push this down by hand or by pulling the legs apart. I always do the former, although I'd rather pull the legs apart, because I worry I might break the plastic parts of the radial connectors. Maybe I worry too much because I have not heard about this happening to anyone, but they seem to be thin and made of plastic. But the plastic is probably very high quality though. So pluses and minuses as always. I would buy this tripod again because of its wonderful stable frame and really nice video head. You have my recommendation. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. This means a lot to me. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again in my future and past videos where I talk about matters related to photography. Have a great day.